If you're looking for a healthy, satisfying, meatless taco, look no further than the prickly pear cactus that you may have growing in your backyard right now. I've got one. No plant has ever been easier to grow. This thing gets zero direct sunlight and it's still exploding. That flower will turn into a cactus fruit that I can eat in the fall, but here in the spring, you have the nopales, the new growth of paddles that pops up in the spring. The young paddles at the tips are a little lighter in color, they're much more tender, and those big spike-looking things are actually floppy and soft. That doesn't mean you should touch these with your bare hands. I'm using tongs to twist these off the plant. One paddle will yield one or two tacos. Oh, sorry to disturb you there. Yikes, that cicada is still alive! There's the exoskeleton that it just molted out of. You can buy nopales in the store, of course, though you might have to seek out a Latin grocery. So here's the part of these that you have to be scared of. It's not the big floppy spikes, but these almost microscopic bunches of spiky hair. These are called glochids. They have micro barbs, and all you have to do is brush up against them to have hundreds lodged beneath your skin. It's the worst. So I'm grabbing the nopal by the tip with the tongs, and I will simply scrape at the surface with my knife. Scrape hard. It's fine if you take Take off some skin while you're at it. Scrape both sides, all sides until smooth, and then you generally go around and you trim off the outer rim of the paddle. It's fibrous and it tends to have a very high concentration of pokey things that you cannot easily scrape off. Once done, you can just wash these off thoroughly. I'm still using my tongs at first. There's tons of loose glow kids in there that could still lodge in your skin, and you definitely don't want them in your throat, so rinse and drain thoroughly. One traditional way to cook these is to slice them into strips or squares, boil them until soft, and then maybe fry them quick in a little oil. Another thing you can do is marinate them and then grill them. I've got a lime and a lemon that I'm squeezing in. I'm basically pretending this is carne asada. Use less citrus if you don't like your food as tart as I do. Big splash or two of soy sauce, enough to get everything covered. Obviously not traditional, but it'll make this taste meaty. I've got some garlic that I've chopped up, then maybe some herbs and some spices. I've got dried oregano, some pepper, toss in some oil, no salt because we have the soy sauce. And then I'll let that sit for as much time as I've got. 20 minutes would probably make a difference. That'll make the nopales a little bit tastier. To make my writing a little bit tastier, I go to Grammarly, sponsor of this video. Grammarly helps you communicate more effectively across different devices and platforms, and now there's their new product, Grammarly Go. It's a personalized, generative AI communications assistant to accelerate your productivity and maybe even unlock a little creativity. If I need to write a farmer an email asking for permission to go film on his field, well, Grammarly Go can do the first draft of that letter for me, and that saves me time. You can make sure you're personalizing your tone by clicking the set voice feature to choose how you want to sound. If the tone isn't right, I can adjust. Make it more formal, please. And then I just hit rephrase. Can we sound a little more confident? Oh, rephrase. Nice. No one is saying that Grammarly Go replaces a human writer, but if you need some inspiration or just a place to start, give it a whirl. It's basically your co-creator. You'll be amazed at what you can do with Grammarly Go. Sign up at Grammarly.com slash Ragusea. Get 20% off Grammarly Premium. 20% off Grammarly Premium with my link in the description. Thank you, Grammarly. Anyway, I'll chop up some toppings for these tacos. I've got a couple of mild, fresh chilies. I'll dice these up. Pretty red and orange ones, because cactus paddles don't look very pretty when cooked, so it's good to top them with prettier things. You could use tomatoes, but we've already got lots of acid in this taco. Hey, remember the Vidalia onion farm that we once visited in Georgia? Apparently those guys are going to send me a box of onions every spring from now on. I'm not complaining. Sweet onions are particularly nice for eating raw, and I want crunchy raw onion to contrast with the soft cactus. I've got some fresh cilantro that I'll mow through, and then what's really good in this is fresh ripe avocado. It cuts the acid and it provides the richness and the warmth that you would get from some fatty braised piece of meat on a taco. Gah, I broke the pit! This is not the safest way to get it out now, but let's just 
pretend that didn't happen, scoop out the flesh with a spoon, and then I'll just recover that with the skin to keep it from oxidizing and turning brown while we grill. My grill is already hot. You could certainly just fry these off in a pan inside onto the hot bars. And look at that string of slime hanging off. Cactus is full of mucilage, the same stuff that makes okra slimy. The boiling process is intended to get lots of that slime out, but I find that marinating the cactus in acid and then grilling really hot also seems to cut or purge the excess slime. Lots of it is now in the marinade, which you can see is being thickened by the mucilage, like gumbo. I'd like it even thicker, and this is a heat-safe bowl, so on it goes, and I'll just reduce that down to a sauce. The nopales are ready to flip whenever you like the color. They taste to me like little green bean steaks, and they're much less delicate than other vegetables. You have to cook them a lot, or else you can't bite through them. I might even cover that for a minute, run in and get a plate to put them on. These are definitely ready to flip, though I can feel they're not floppy enough to pull yet. My sauce has reduced a bit. Maybe now I'll summon forth the upside-down bear to balance out the salty and sour with some sweet. If I'd put it in the marinade, well, the nopales probably would have been burning by now, because sugar burns. Give that a stir. After 10 minutes on the grill, those paddles feel almost floppy enough. I'll pull them soon. I like them still a little toothsome. I can throw some corn tortillas on the grill for a minute. If you're like me and you have some trouble with the mealy texture of fresh corn tortillas, man, just grill them for a minute or fry them in a pan for a sec. The texture totally changes. Just don't go for too much color. You don't need any color at all. And if you get these too hot, they'll lock up stiff as they cool. The cactus you can easily reheat in the microwave microwave if necessary, by the way. It's not crispy or anything. My sauce has reduced a lot. It'll be thick enough after it cools. We're done here. I'll cut the nopales into strips like carne asada, just stack it up and slice through. I can feel these will still have a little bite, which is nice. Throw them strips onto a taco, top with some peppers, onions. Whenever possible, I like to slice avocado at the last second to prevent enzymatic browning. Lay a slice on there, top with some cilantro. No other seasoning on here because my sauce is citrusy, garlicky, reduced soy sauce. It's very salty, so the net salt content of the total taco is just perfect. These taste really meaty, really fresh, and healthy. I've been meaning to try to cook that damn cactus for a while now, and I'm shocked my first attempt came out this good. This is no one's traditional taco, obviously, but it is mine, and it's real tasty. I feel like I should end with a pun about prickly things or sharp things, but I have none, so bye. <laughs>